it lies remote from Europe, high in the North Atlantic. Iceland, home to one of the world's great wildernesses, barren and for the most part uninhabitable, full of glaciers and Arctic deserts. It may be cold in the clouds, but deep within Iceland's volcanic crust beats a hot-blooded and furiously powerful heart. Eleven hundred years ago, Vikings used the power of the wind to sail here. Now the people of Iceland are hoping to harness another readily available energy source from right underneath their feet. Iceland is hoping to become the world's first hydrogen economy. The aim to free itself from fossil fuel dependency within maybe 30 years. In a way you can ask yourself where does the audacity come from for this small nation desiring to lead the world in a field where all the nations have a stake. And maybe it comes from this desire to be creative, to do something new, to, uh, to walk paths that uh, nobody has walked before. This geyser, about an hour's drive from the capital Reykjavik, is one of Iceland's most popular tourist attractions. The country has more geothermal activity bubbling underground than anywhere in the world. Icelanders have a great appreciation of nature. It extends right across society and all the way to the White House, where President Oliver Ragnar Grimson exudes an environmental righteousness that's almost evangelical. We have this eternal machine in this country created by the Almighty, consisting of the fire below and the ground, and the glaciers and the water that comes from the sky, and it goes on and on, year after year, century after century, creating this fascinating source of energy. <laughs> Back in the 1970s, scientists realized they'd harnessed only a tiny fraction of Iceland's hot springs, rivers, and waterfalls. Iceland has no oil, gas, or coal reserves, and across its volcanic vistas, no timber either. for cheap, sustainable energy became critical. And so, an ambitious project was born to do away with expensive imported fuels and heat the city of Reykjavik from the power within. A generation on, and steam-powered turbines now produce low-cost, non-polluting electricity and hot water piped all over the country. Today, almost every building in Iceland is heated this way. <laughs> and this is the man largely responsible. Professor Bray Arneson, better known as Professor Hydrogen, preparing to take a dip in the power plant's wastewater, known to locals and tourists alike as the famous Blue Lagoon Spa. For more than 40 years, Professor Hydrogen has mapped and researched Iceland's geothermal energy. It was he who first posed the question, if we can heat our water, 
why can't we fuel our cars? We have only taken the first real steps towards the hydrogen economy. And we have a very long way to go still. And there have been a lot of problems and a uh, lot of trouble and uh, everything uh, like when you were in a research work. But at the end, I am almost certain that we will succeed. And the reason he believes it will succeed is that Iceland is the perfect laboratory. It has a small infrastructure, but a real one. And good ideas don't get lost in bureaucracy. The benefit of such a small society is that every communication goes very fast. We don't have to wait for half a year to get the answer from minister. We can pick up the phone and talk to him. That, that's a, a very great advantage. In order to justify our existence, we have to be relevant. We have to make a contribution. We have to do something new. And the hydrogen project became a fascination for the people of Iceland because it combined our emphasis on clean energy, on the waterfalls, on the geysers, on creating electricity and energy from and environmentally sound resources that are completely renewable. To understand the essence of all this, we need to stand among the test tubes and lab coats at the University of Reykjavik, where Thorsten Sigfusen, head of Icelandic New Energy, will try to explain how it all works. Hydrogen is the most common element in the universe. It's all over the universe, if you like. It's the lightest of the elements, it's the simplest of the elements. When hydrogen combines with oxygen, it forms water. And in fact, you can split water by using electricity again into hydrogen and oxygen. And this is exactly the basis of this hydrogen energy economy that we would be using hydrogen for powering vehicles, ships, buses, etc. So Iceland has plenty of the key ingredients, water and electricity. Zap water with electricity and you produce hydrogen, which is then passed through a fuel cell to power an electric motor. The benefits, no pollutants. No smoke, only steam. It really is quite a visionary idea. How do you guarantee that the momentum will be there to see it to the end? I think the momentum will, will come from the fact, from the sheer fact that the oil, the oil reserves of Earth have come to the, the, the top. We are now, this, the slope is downwards from now on. This is what everyone recognizes. And uh, be it 50 years or 100 years, doesn't matter, the oil has to be replaced somehow. A few years ago, this hydrogen-powered motor attracted the interest of international vehicle and energy companies. They were soon knocking on the presidential door, asking to come in, bringing millions of investment dollars with them. What is it that brings such different participants together and unifies them in this one project? I think it is a vision of the future. I think it is a desire, really, to change the world. I think we are seeing this as a new alternative, a new energy source coming into the market. And we are sort of energy company, and we are distributing energy. So if this is a future product, we want to be in there. It's Friday afternoon and Reykjavik's drivers are pouring out of the city, filling up their four-wheel drives and heading for the great outdoors. Despite their clean and green ethos, 
Icelanders are rather bad polluters. They own more cars per head than just about anyone else in the world. Concerned with Iceland's own contribution to global warming, the government believes one day hydrogen fuel will cut greenhouse emissions by 50%. Within a couple of months, Daimler Chrysler will deliver the hydrogen-powered buses to truly begin this energy revolution. They won't fill up here, but just on the other side of the forecourt, at the world's first hydrogen filling station. It will take about six and a half minutes to fill each bus from this uh, dispenser station here, and they will have enough hydrogen to run for a whole day's 250 kilometers within Reykjavik. Besides that, we will see the queued buses, the nine other cities in Europe, with three buses each, uh, all running uh, in, the, in, the, in the months to come, if you like. By now, you might be thinking what an idyllic place Iceland is. How sensitive and respectful people are of its environmental health. You'd be partly right, of course, but the hydrogen economy won't be delivering its benefits for years. And in the meantime, Iceland, like everywhere else, has to balance environmental considerations with economic ones. It's about to embark on its biggest development project yet, a multi-billion dollar scheme which will change one of its greatest wildernesses forever. The government has reached an agreement with the Alcoa company to reroute rivers, flood big parts of the highlands and build several dams to provide hydroelectricity for a new aluminium smelter in one of the eastern fjords. We are very much aware that here in Iceland we have the largest wilderness left in Europe. You can travel all over Europe and you will not find the open spaces, the landscape wilderness that you find in this country. And we know that we are here the guardians of this wilderness, not just for ourselves, but for mankind, for, for future generations. But at the same time, we have to make a living. Last year, this woman went on a hunger strike to try to stop the project going ahead. Her name is Hilda Rune Höxdotter, better known as the mother of Iceland's most famous export, the pop star Björk. Hilda Rune Höxdotter is returning to the highlands for the first time since construction began. She cannot believe her government's willingness to sacrifice this place. How precious is this part of the highlands to Icelandic people? To me, they are the pride of Iceland. To be an Icelander, to have this mountain, to have this wilderness, and to take it away is like you're losing your identity. But the huge project is already underway. Access roads, and tunnels being carved in preparation for work to begin on a huge reservoir. But Iceland faces some tough economic realities. Two thirds of its economy is based on the sometimes unreliable fishing industry. And while tourism is a growing sector, the season is a short one, often only three months long. 
Hjalmar Arneson is one politician who says the smelter must go ahead, arguing that if it's powered by Icelandic electricity, at least it will be clean. Although we have to sacrifice something in our unique nature, this is a very small part of, of Iceland we are sacrificing, but what we gain is our contribution, environmental contribution to the world, and we create money. We are exporting electricity in the form of aluminium. We create job, and we will maintain the, the most beautiful part of Iceland. It's Saturday afternoon and hundreds of fans are watching Iceland's version of an off-road bush bash. It's a day of gravity-defying thrills and spills and nowhere in the country is fossil fuel being guzzled with greater thirst. But if the vision of a hydrogen economy is to become reality, this sort of thing may no longer be affordable. At the moment, hydrogen costs up to three times as much to produce as petrol or diesel fuel, and scientists can't yet agree on the best way to store it. And even if the experiment works here, it won't be easy to replicate elsewhere, because few countries have such easy access to clean electricity. all of which makes fossil fuel a more attractive economic option for now. Icelanders, though, are convinced that as the oil dries up, hydrogen is the way of the future. If it comes together in a positive way, we can show the rest of the world that it is indeed possible to have an entire society or a city comprehensively based on a new type of energy. Energy that doesn't threaten the life on earth, doesn't threaten the climate and is friendly to the future of mankind. And I'm sure there will be authorities all over the world who will take a very keen interest in this project and I would say if it succeeds will have to adjust their entire city planning, their way of life, their way of thinking to the success of the Icelandic experiment. If it comes off, it will indeed be a remarkable achievement. Not that Icelanders would be that surprised. I'd like to tell you, good ideas have been bubbling away here for thousands of years.